from my daughter, Days. One, what causes White's tree frogs, Latoria cerulea, to change color? She's watched hers do so for years. Two, the wood frog, Lithobates sylveticus, what causes their heart to restart after cryopreservation? Mm. All right. Yeah, Heather. <laughs> um, let me go with the wood frog first. Uh, that's a new genus you're giving it. Um, I assume that this is, um, this is, it's just had a name change since I last checked in with this frog. Um, if it is the frog I'm thinking of, it is in, um, it is present in sort of the middle, uh, mid-continental uh, North America, U.S., up into uh, southern Canada. And these frogs actually uh, get frozen solid frozen solid, not just their hearts, um, but during hard winters. They, they estivate, they bury, they bury under, and then um, they don't even keep anything going. They just become ice cubes. Like if you dig them up and uh, you drop them, they shatter. And then- We are not advising that you do that. They don't restart after they shatter. Frogs, you heard it here first, frogs do not restart after they shatter. Um, Unlike starfish. You could shatter a starfish? Uh, you can prune the legs off. Ah, that's a little different from shattering. It's less dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are the tools we have as biologists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what is the actual mechanism of restarting? Uh, I, I don't know at like the cellular level, um, but there is a kind of antifreeze, um, I, th I think in these guys, um, that basically begins to circulate as the frog begins to thaw and they can only deal with so many, well, so, so slow a freeze thaw cycle and so many of them within X number of, of weeks. And so, you know, particularly chaotic springs, for instance, can leave a, a you know, an Iowa landscape bereft of these frogs because they just, they, they don't come out of it successfully. Um, but if they thaw slowly and better off if it's just once, um, they, uh, they restart, but I don't, I don't have, there's a big black box there in the explanation that I don't know more about. I'm going to take a crack at it. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to predict that I'm um, predict is one of these things where it's a prediction because I don't know. It doesn't right. mean nobody knows. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to predict that there is a battery-like set of cells that is positioned in the tissue such that it does not take what little energy it has accumulated and fire it off too early. That is to say, while the heart is still partly frozen and therefore would damage itself or be unable to start. Mm -hmm. There is some battery that un that thaws at the right moment that the heart is capable of restarting, it's not too early, it's not too late, and that it sends a signal to the pacemaker, which basically functions as a defibrillator. Mm. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. Nope, neither yeah. do I. Yeah. It's a prediction. Uh, and with regard to the White's tree frogs, uh, what causes them to change color? I do not remember what the mechanism is on those guys. There are a number of mechanisms of color change in mostly reptiles, but also a few frogs um, that involve basically chromatophores, these, you know, just the things in the skin that can, that can flip that are often usually uh, a t effectively a toggle and they're binary and they can go from one to the other but obviously there are some um over in reptile space not just chameleons that have a have, have a continuum and that's a different mechanism and i don't know what also, the Latoria do cephalopod mollusks have i think a wide range yeah and i think um, they i think that that's a different evolution entirely yep. whereas i think what's going on in a few frogs and many more squamates um is a shared i think a shared evolution whereas the cephalopods is going to be you know, a different, yep. different evolution of color change. I'm going to say uh, I strongly... And then some fish, too. And so I don't know if the fish, like the actinops, like ray fin fish that do this, um, is a separate evolution from the other vertebrates. Don't know. Yeah. And even if they are separate evolutions, probably there's some precursor that they share. Yes. Yeah. So this is the way it is with the vision pigments and stuff. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I think it's melancholy that causes these frogs to change color. Melancholy. Yeah. yeah. I think that's probably right. Mm -hmm. Frogs are a sad lot. Oh, Sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I did see, uh, probably on Reddit recently, somebody posted in, uh, maybe it's the Nature is Fucking Lit subreddit, um, <laughs> a video of a cephalopod, I think an octopus. Um, it's a child's question, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, it's just, it's a subreddit. <laughs> I'm I, just quoting. I, I didn't name it. Mm -hmm. um, 
In any case, they posted a video of a an I'm sure it was an octopus um, changing color in its dream state, which raises all kinds in its of dream state. Did you say? Sure appears how do we, to be. How do we know? Well, because it appears to be in a dormant phase. Also, cephalopods dream. That's the thing. Is it's like how many different convergences are, are this, represented so just, here? So you know, how is it that we? Uh, can so quickly say, ah, oh, well, color change in cephalopods is going to be a different evolution from color change in vertebrates, and even more easily immediately conclude, well, if cephalopods of octopi and squid or some of them dream, then it's got to be a separate evolution of dreaming than what we have, because we see evidence of dreams in many mammals. I don't know if there's any evidence in birds. Um, but I don't think that I've seen anyone discuss the possibility of dream state in any of the other non-mammalian vertebrates, which means the most recent common ancestor of humans, mammals, and cephalopods is how many hundreds of millions of years ago? Like six, seven? I, I don't know. I'm making that number up, but more than... Hmm. It's early on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. And those organisms weren't dreaming because we have no evidence of dreaming in almost any organisms that we've looked at. So these guys are dreaming? Says sure who? Looks like How do it. we know? Well, you know, I guess you would say uh, you would have brain activity uh, that Incidentally, is... Incidentally, different evolution of brains. Yep, different evolution of brains, but yeah. you would be able to detect the electrical impulses associated with processing mm -hmm. that is taking place while the animal's not taking in new data. Yeah. And I would say, you know, painting with a broad brush, that's dreams. Okay. Um, it's at least processing whether or not there's, I guess, dreams for us is always tied into visual cortex stuff, right? Yep. There's, there's at least memory of visual stuff. Uh, even I believe for blind people, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so uh, we obviously can't interview the octopi yet. Oh, we can. About... They just don't cooperate. Yeah, they really, they're not interested. No. No. Uh, so uh, we can see that there's processing going on, but we don't know what the subjective experience is like for them, nor yep. can we.